Ahoy hoy! Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, or time appropriate greeting, depending on when you're watching this video or where you're located, but thank you for joining me nonetheless. I am your host of this series, The Kevin Chandler, and you are watching The Stories Behind, UFC 219, which is going to be going down this Saturday, December 30th, at the T Mobile Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada, but we're not going to be there. We're going to be here breaking down the fights for you guys. So the fights are going to be headlined by Chris Cyborg versus Holly Holm. That's going to be the main event of the night, capping off the main card. But to get us started, we're going to be talking about Carlos Condit versus Neil Magny. Basically, the easiest through line throughout this entire night of fights, starting with this card, is experience and or name recognition. So, Carlos Condit has the name recognition. You might even recognize him or know who he is. He fought previously in the WEC, eventually into the UFC, put on, was known for putting on incredibly violent, exciting, aggressive fights, earned his natural-born killer moniker handily, and a quick Google image search will tell you why. So... Carlos Condit worked his way up the ladder, ended up winning an interim championship, and ended up retiring about a year ago. He said that he would only be coming back for kind of big name fights or title fights, which is why I'm kind of surprised to see that he is fighting Neil Magny to kick off the pay-per-view this Saturday, because Neil Magny doesn't really have the name recognition. He started on the Ultimate Fighter reality show. The season that he was on, he ended up winning that season, went on to proving that he belongs in the UFC, and then kind of quickly transitioned to proving that he belongs in the upper echelon of the UFC. But in the past couple years, he's kind of struggled, won two, lost two, and he's also struggled to really make a name for himself. He struggled to put on performances that make people go, oh, Neil Magny, I cannot wait to see your next fight. So he's had some decisions, some split decisions. So this is an opportunity for him to kind of take that name recognition from Carlos Condit. Carlos Condit, I'm guessing, sees this as an opportunity to come in and remind people he is that natural-born killer, hyper-aggressive, hyper-exciting fighter, and wants to probably work his way back into title contention. So we're going to find out what happens on Saturday. That moves us on to Carla Esparza versus Cynthia Calvillo, and this kind of goes back to the experience argument. So Carla Esparza also was on The Ultimate Fighter. Uh, she also won her season. Her season was actually for a championship. So the winner of her season, she ended up fighting and beating the current champion, Rose Namajunas, for the 115-pound women's championship of the world. So Carla Esparza is an ex-UFC champion. However, she lost that championship in relatively short order to Joanna Janjacek, and Joanna kind of out, not kind of, outclassed Carla on her feet. And after that, Carla kind of struggled to show us she had more on her feet or more of a well-rounded game, as opposed to just wrestling girls, taking them down and being able to kind of dominate the fight there. She also, Carla Spars, I think has had like three fights in the last two years, so hasn't really fought that frequently. So maybe has an opportunity to show us what she's been learning in training. Cynthia Calvillo, on the other hand, has been fighting frequently. Four fights in this year alone. Cynthia Calvillo is on a lot of people's shortlist for Fighter of the Year, and understandably so, because she has looked incredibly dominant in all of her four fights. Even if she isn't finishing girls, she's putting on impressively dominating performances. She's actually been effectively, affectionately rather called uh, Chick Diaz from people. So Nick Diaz, who some people of you might know, I think he's on my wall up back over there, but... He fights out of Stockton, California, or fought out of Stockton, California, earned a huge fan base for kind of being a no-holds-barred fighter, talking a bunch, of, and going in there and just slinging, taunting guys, encouraging them, slapping people in the face in mid-fights. And Cynthia Calvillo tends to seem to have that kind of bring-it-on, awesome jiu-jitsu kind of attitude. She fights out of Northern California as well, but Sacramento out of Team Alpha Male, so people like to affectionately call her Chick Diaz. So Chick Diaz has had these four fights this year and looked absolutely incredible. This is now her opportunity in terms of name recognition both girls are kind of struggling Cynthia Calvillo is building her name this year and has done a great job building it but is still kind of building it Carla Sparza was a UFC champion but kind of lost a bit of that status so basically this is an opportunity for both girls to kind of steal it from each other so can Cynthia Calvillo continue her steamroll of the 115 pound division to take out Carla Sparza in an ex UFC champion or can Carla Esparza prove that she has learned more in her training in the past couple years, that she is actually that top dominant force and probably wants to challenge Rose Namunis again for the title? We'll see. 
Unfortunately, we are not going to be talking about Jimmy Rivera versus John Lineker because that fight isn't happening. So that's actually going to move us right on to Edson Barboza versus Khabib, say it with me now, Nurmagomedov. So that's a Dagestani fighter in Russia. And so they're all pretty phonetic. I'll probably mess it up if I say it later. But Nurmagomedov, if you say it slowly, you should be fine. Khabib. Oh, man, has had kind of a love-hate relationship with a lot of the, his fans. His Russian and Dagestani fans love him regardless, but a lot of the main kind of core group of hardcore MMA fans have been pretty frustrated with him because he's missed weight a few times. He doesn't fight during Ramadan. He has shown us to possibly be the greatest fighter at 155 pounds, but hasn't thought enough or recently enough to kind of remind or actually show and prove us that. To give you a brief example, the last fight he had, he was against Michael Johnson, and he was talking to Michael Michael Johnson as he was beating him up. So he's like got him on the ground against the fence and like as he's punching him in the face, he's like, I, I must fight for the title. You know this, Michael. I must fight for the title. Are you serious? That's real life. That happened. But that happened like over a year ago and he hasn't fought since. So can he still show us that he's as dominant as he used to be? He's going to show us against Edson Barboza, who's basically a, a walking highlight reel. Edson has been active, and he has been active destroying people. He has some of the best kicks in all of the UFC, definitely the 155-pound division. He has finished guys with low kicks so that they can't stand up anymore, like kicking their legs. He's finished guys with body kicks, like kicking their stomach or like kidneys or livers so that they can't stand up anymore or just you know, keel over. He's also finished fights with like head kick, spinning, wheel kick, knockouts that just knock dudes unconscious. There's nothing they can do about it obviously. So Edson Barboza, you know you're in for an exciting fight every single time. He brings it. He's going to bring it against Khabib, and we're going to find out. Another interesting thing about this is going to be the classic striker versus grappler. So Khabib fights with a Sambo style, which is a martial art out of Russia, kind of primarily specializing in grappling, takedowns, wrestling, a little bit of submissions on the ground, also punching and striking on the feet, but really kind of getting people to the ground. Edson Barboza, on the other hand, specializes in punching, kicking, elbowing, kneeing people in the face and body. That's what he does and has been doing so for a very long time. So if this stays on their feet, it's Edson's world. Edson's world to play with. And the last fight Khabib had, he did not look good on his feet against Michael Johnson. So if Edson can keep it there, there's a good chance that Edson should just walk right through Khabib on his feet. However, Khabib has taken down, I'm pretty sure, every single person he's fought. And when he's done so, he's just destroyed them on the ground. So Edson has been working his ground game in jiu-jitsu, I believe out of Ricardo Almeida in uh, New Jersey. But I can't imagine he's been able to work it up to the level of Khabib here yet. So that's what gives us almost the fun, like UFC 1 style kickboxer versus wrestler who's going to win kind of thing. So who's going to win? We're going to find out on Saturday. Which... Leads us in to that main event of the night that I was talking about, which is Chris Cyborg versus Holly Holm. And as you can tell, I am palpably excited for this fight because it's really, really exciting. A lot of people don't know who Chris Cyborg is, which is kind of a shame and a travesty because while Ronda Rousey was ripping people's arms off in like a minute or two, Chris Cyborg was also just murdering chicks in Invicta, but doing so like 10 pounds up. So the people that were like hardcore fans had been like clamoring to see Ronda versus Cyborg and it had always been kind of talked about it but Cyborg couldn't come down and Ronda always demanded that she come down and Cyborg's just too big. Cyborg walks around at like 170, 185. She's a really big girl. Really big girl. So she wouldn't, couldn't come down to make the weight. So they just never fought. Holly Holm was the first girl, first fighter ever really to win a major boxing championship and then parlay that into mixed martial arts, subsequently win a major mixed martial arts championship in her UFC title, where you probably know she head kick Ronda Rousey into Bolivia. And so she does that, wins the major title that's now boxing and MMA by crushing Ronda Rousey and like, oh my gosh, immediately catapults herself up into one of the greatest fighters of all time. But Chris Cyborg is obviously still out there looming, waiting in the wings or whatever. The UFC finally makes a 145 pound women's division of which basically consists of Chris Cyborg to give her a UFC title and keep her fans and Chris Cyborg fighting in the UFC. So she doesn't have anybody to fight. Holly Holm decides to come up, take that challenge, and it affords her the opportunity to unquestionably mark herself as the greatest female fighter of all time. Chris Cyborg 
also has that same opportunity because she's never fought anyone like Holly Holm. She's fought an incredible roster of fighters in her past, but never anyone with the caliber of technique that Holly Holm has. So Chris Cyborg has the opportunity to crush Holly Holm, insert herself or rather reinsert herself as the most dominant female champion we've ever seen and likely the greatest female fighter we've ever seen of all time. However, Holly Holm has the opportunity if she goes on to beat Ronda Rousey, then beat, beat Chris Cyborg, which are the two girls that we all wanted to fight because we thought that was going to be the greatest fight of all time. Unquestionably, Holly Holm has to be the greatest female fighter of all time. So that is the opportunity she has. That is the opportunity that everyone has on these fights is to make a name for yourself and build that fan base and recognition. So we're going to see what happens. I'm going to be watching. Are you going to be watching? Speaking of watching, thank you for watching me right now. I sincerely appreciate it. And I also sincerely hope that you have a fantastic rest of your day. Bye.